Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but uh, first, let's give a shout out to our partners, Vital Signs Wall of Fame, We Coach, the Florida Coaches Coalition, and the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. These are four great partners that we have. Check them out. And now don't fast forward, take three minutes and listen to our uh, sponsor shout outs. They're all great sponsors. You should uh, be working with them. We want to thank Gipper. Go to Gipper.com and see how athletic directors are creating world-class content for their school social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device and you don't need any experience. Use our podcast code. Go to Gipper.com and tell them you heard about it and say uh, ADPOD10 and you'll get 10% off. Start creating custom content for your school social media channel at Gipper.com. We also want to thank Huddle. Go to huddle.com and change the way you see the game. Huddle is going to provide your school, your coaches, your teams, and your athletes the tools that they need to play at the highest level. Huddle is going to provide a professional-grade solution to the challenges that you and your teams face. At Huddle, we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 6 million users and turn your school into a Huddle school. We want to thank Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and their boards in action. It's one of the best purchases I ever made for our program. It not only generates income, but also creates the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com. Check them out today. We also want to thank Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you as an athletic director do your job better. Their Snap Store, Snap Manage, Snap Connect, and also Snap Raise, their fundraising platform that we've used with great success, and you can too. They even have a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. Go to snapraise.com. Check them out today. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to set up and sell your tickets online, not just for athletic events, but for things like dances, school plays and concerts, even graduation. And the best part, every step of the way, you'll have a dedicated client success manager that's providing you hands-on support. That's every step of the way. Check it out today at hometownticketing.com. We also want to thank our good friends at Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. The Wall of Fame is an interactive touchscreen video console that's going to highlight the achievements of your students, both past and present, in academics, athletics, and the arts. But it's so much more than that. The Wall of Fame is going to help you tell more compelling stories. It's a content manager. Uh, and allow you to connect better with your constituents. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake. Check out their great products and then use that link, vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake, and get 5% off. That's Vital Signs Wall of Fame. We also want to say thank you to Final Forms, the industry leader in forms and registration, but they are so much more than that. Final Forms is going to help you have your best season ever, whether you're an athletic director, a superintendent, or an IT professional. Vital Science can help you with your workload and the reports that come across your desk, plus your coaches, plus your stakeholders. Go to vital go to finalforms.com slash Jake for more information. That's finalforms.com slash Jake. Final Forms is the official registration platform for the FIAAA's state conference. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. Athletic directors typically only hear back from that 2%, you know, that frustrated parent or maybe an athlete that didn't have a great experience. And we do need to hear back from them so we can make positive changes in our program. But we also need to hear back from that 98% that really love and support our program. And that's where Athletic Surveys comes in. Go to athleticsurveys.com 
They're going to set up a custom survey for you and your department and help you connect better with your parents, your student athletes, and anyone else you want to survey. Take the pulse of your athletic department with Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Go to athleticsurveys.com to get started today. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We're going to Illinois today, and we're going to be talking with Scott Battis. He is a certified athletic administrator, also uh, recently the president-elect for the Illinois AD Association. He's the athletic director at Muscuda High School, and that's in Muscuda, Illinois. We're going to hear all about that. But Scott Battis, welcome to the Educational AD Podcast. Well, thanks for having me. It's a it's a it's a great opportunity, and I, I appreciate you having me on. Well, uh, again, we connected a while back, and uh, was uh, you know eager to get you on the show. So let's go ahead and jump in. We always like to let our guests uh, tell a little bit about themselves. So uh, you know, give us that brief bio where you were born and grew up. Uh, certainly, you know those high school days. Maybe take us up through your college years, and we'll take a break and hear more about your early career, but uh, what's the Scott Battis origin story? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I was born and raised in Muscoota, where I'm at right now, which is kind of a neat dynamic. Uh, I went to high school here, uh, played three sports, uh, and, and then I went on to college, actually walked on uh, at Northern Illinois University and played football there. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's in the same state, but quite a distance away as a four-hour trip up north from here. But, um I loved it there in DeKalb. Uh, had a great experience, and then got my uh, got my special education degree at the NIU. Um, and then I was a student assistant coach after my career uh, for a year uh, at NIU. And then uh, recently, after graduate or not recently, but um, soon after graduation, I uh, I got a coaching job at DeKalb High School in, in DeKalb, where NIU is located. Uh, worked for Dan Jones, who's a longtime athletic administrator himself. Um, uh, I just recently retired and mentor of mine, but he's, uh, he was the head football coach there and, and I uh, coached with him for a year, uh, with a special ed, fifth and sixth grade special ed teacher in DeKalb. And then, um, after a year there, I, I came back down to Edwardsville, Illinois, where I was an assistant football coach at uh, Edwardsville high school and a special ed teacher there for a few years. Um, and then finally found my way back here to Muscoota. Uh, I think I came back in 2007. It was my first year back at Muscuda as an assistant football coach, special ed teacher. Uh, took over the head football job in 2009 uh, at Muscuda, uh, teaching special ed. And then uh, a few years later, um, the athletic director job came open and uh, something I've always really wanted to do uh, uh, was be an athletic director even back to my high school days. So kind of things coming full circle for me, especially in my hometown. Um uh, you know, and I was eager to get to work and kind of do some of the things that I always thought we could do here. Um, and I've been doing this now for nine years. I gave up football after two years of trying to do both. And uh, I wouldn't recommend that to uh, to anybody that wants to stay sane and has children and a family. But, but you know, some people manage that well. But I think, uh, you know, one thing I will say is an athletic director job deserves all of your attention. And uh, uh, there are plenty of things to do. Uh, to make sure you're doing things the right way. So uh, that's where I'm at now. Um, I've been a longtime member of the Illinois Athletic Directors Association. I've kind of worked my way up there. And as you mentioned, um, very proud to be the president-elect of that association, which was a very, uh, very, very good foundation for my career using the resources there and the people there to kind of uh, help me move along. So that's where I'm at now. And it's crazy that it's been that many years, but it has been. And uh, I'm excited for the, the second half of my career. I guess I've I've, I've surpassed the halfway point, but uh, I'm, I'm eager, to, eager, to, eager to take on the rest. Uh, again, great stuff. Uh, we're we're going to talk more about uh, coming back to your own uh, school to work at, uh, but I want to go even uh, further back. Let's go back to those high school days. You, know, you mentioned you were a three sport athlete. You know, nowadays, and, and I hope the pendulum has swung a little bit back. Uh, but um, what was your experience like? as a three sport athlete, were you guys at a small high school, big high school? And, and how do you transfer? How do you take that experience that you had as a student athlete and let kids and parents of this generation understand how valuable that was and how valuable it can be for a, a kid today? Um, you know, so again, share a little about your experience and maybe things that you do to promote three sport athletes at your school. 
Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, I am a very firm believer in multiple sports. I, I you know, th- played three myself, uh, and I encourage everyone to do so, including my own kids. I think they should play as many things as they possibly can, become familiar with uh, many different things. I've got some pretty strong opinions on 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 the topic. I, you know, the three sport thing, I think is unique. It's always been kind of unique. I think it was obviously something that people did more. Uh, I don't want to say back in the day, but, you know, uh, quite a few years ago was more popular. I think as the club and the AAU things have become more popular, you know, when I, I was in high school in the 90s, you know, to play on an AAU basketball team, you had to be one of the best players in the region to, to play on one of those. Now you just have to be a basketball player and you can play AAU basketball player, for example. Same thing with volleyball, same thing with baseball. Everybody's traveling, everybody's doing all these things. So I think in in turn, and I've got a lot of opinions on that too, and I think uh, – you know, there'll be some research come out uh, probably in the near in the near future that's that's showing some of these trends and how they they really are affecting the family dynamic and some other things. But that's a whole different topic. Um, uh, but I do think it's important that kids um, try to master as many skills as they possibly can. And and one of the things that people don't talk enough about with multiple sport athletes, and I'm very close friends with coaches at the highest level uh, of college athletics. Um, you know, all the way from one of my best friends, PJ Fleck, all the way down to assistant coaches in in NAIA and some of these other levels. And I talk to them all frequently about this topic. And I and I think it's funny. You know, I can tell parents till till they're blue in the face that the highest level of coaches wants your kid to play more than one sport, and they don't believe you. <laughs> and 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 when you when you talk about the reasons why and 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 the evidence, th- there are so many things that college coaches are looking for, but, but the most important aspect of a student athlete that they want to see is their competitiveness. You know, I think we get what we get, we get caught up in skills and abilities and stats. Very few coaches at the college level will tell you that they will look at your local newspaper to find stats on the kid to recruit. Hardly any, if any, what they want to see is a kid that is competitive, that is coachable, and that can find ways to help their team wins games. That's all they want. And they see that when they come to watch, you know, an offensive lineman that might play basketball or wrestle. And sometimes they'll tell you they put more stock into that visit than they ever did the one that they came to watch a football game. A lot of times they don't even come watch them play football games because they're in their own, own season. Same thing for basketball, same thing for volleyball. They're watching them play other sports because they're in the offseason too. But what they're just looking for that competitive flair that gives them the 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 kind of kind of the approval for the kid they're trying to recruit, and a lot of times that's just simply done on the mindset they see in the kid, the way they see them proud to wear that that town on their chest more so than you know the mascot that the the select travel team chose. Uh, and and I and I do think those things are important, and I'm not trying to sell, you know, snake oil. It's reality, and and the mo- and I tell our coaches, and I tell our players, and our athletes, and I'm very involved in our programs that we want to be competitive. Competitive excellence will be the most refined skill our kids take from here if we have anything to do about it, because I think that's what Coach wants. So we will try our best to share athletes. We don't get them all, but we get we do have a lot of dual sport athletes here. Try uh, and not as many three sport athletes because I do think that that has changed in the availability of time and doing some of the skills training and stuff, which is relevant. Uh, takes away from some of that, but uh, multiple playing multiple sports is is vital if you really want to be a high level college player at the next level. Well, uh, you just became a friend of the show, uh, you know, with, with that little segment. And again, you're absolutely right. You know, we don't have to wait for the research. The research is already in yeah. that, you know, kids not only play whatever their favorite sport is, uh, you know, you can pick that favorite uh, travel team sport, uh, but they, they're they not only better in that sport by doing other sports, but they're also, they have that best ability, which is availability because they're not injured from overuse doing that same sport uh, all year long. And and you're absolutely right. You know, the, the parent, I think the kids kind of get it, but it's some of the parents that don't understand. They think, well, they need that one more camp, that one more uh, travel tournament, that one more rep, if you will, uh, that, uh, oftentimes leads to injury. So great stuff. Uh, Again, for our listeners, our guest today is Scott Battis. He's a certified athletic administrator, president elect of the Illinois Athletic Director Association. And he's the director of athletics at Mascuda High School. I hope I pronounced that right. uh, In Illinois. Okay. We're going to take our first break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. 
We want to say thanks to Gipper for their support of the podcast. Go to Gipper.com and see how schools are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channel. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. Go to Gipper.com and use our code ADPOD10, and you'll get 10% off. That's Gipper.com. Create custom content for your school's social media channel. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to huddle.com and change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but when I became an athletic director, I made sure our school was a Huddle school. And our coaches just love the smart cameras, the mobile apps. Of course, they love the analytics, but there's so much more. And Huddle provides you with a professional grade solution to the challenges that your teams, your coaches, your players are going to face. At Huddle, we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 6 million users and find out how to turn your school into a Huddle school. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest today is Scott Battis, a certified athletic administrator, and he's the director of athletics at Muscuda High School, and that's in Muscuda, Illinois. Let's go and talk about that. Um, Scott, you mentioned that you uh, are uh, you came back and for a number of years you taught and coached and now you are the athletic director at the school where you went to high school. Um, I remember I came back uh, right out of college as a substitute teacher at my old high school. And uh, I remember walking into the faculty room and here's some of my coaches and teachers and they're they're looking and they're going, you became a teacher. Uh, so I might have been a little mischievous in my youth. But uh, how was that for you coming back? Uh, and again, you started out teaching and coaching, but now you're probably, I assume, directing uh, some people that were probably coaches of you. How was your reception coming back and how do you feel it works now? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I, uh, you know, uh, when I came back, obviously uh, I, I worked my way back up to this role as a coach. I, I worked for some of my former coaches, uh, you know, and, and, and had that dynamic. And then when I took over as the head football coach, I had some of my former coaches who worked for me. Um, uh, and it is a challenge. And I will always say, Going back, those were probably some of my most challenging times, trying to manage that in the way that I believed we needed to do it, um, but at the same time making tough decisions with people that I had a lot of respect for and, uh, you know, coached me. I'm not sure I handled that as well then as I would now, uh, to be completely honest. Uh, and I think um, as I've grown in this role, I've been able to use those experiences to help some of my coaches now kind of fight through some of those waters uh, because, you know, when you, when you have a small town, and I, we're a, we're a smaller town. Our, our, our school has 1200 kids. So we're not tiny by any means. Um, <clears throat> we are 60% military because we are attached to a military base. They, their kids are part of our school district. So it's an interesting dynamic. I, our town is about 9,000 people. And then the, the air force base is attached. So we have that uh, mobility and a lot of interesting things here. But a lot of people do want to come back here because it is a great place to live. It's a great school district. Uh, some of the highest achieving academic uh, schools uh, in the region from kindergarten all the way up through high school. So I mean, we, we have a lot going here, athletic program really on solid ground. So people do want to come back and we do have those. Now, I will say in my time, uh, we've pretty much transitioned out to where a lot of the coaches that work for me now uh, were ones that I hired and brought in. Uh, so so I got a couple guys on my staff still um, that that were here when I was in high school um, and I have a great relationship with them, uh, you know, great, and, and I think the, the reason I do is because my hard work, I feel like has validated uh, my position. I, I think that we, we've worked really hard together as a staff. The schools let me do my job. I did come in with big plans and tried to execute those plans. Um, and and, and the, the way you, you earn validity is by doing what you say you're going to do. And um, I think what we were able to do this. I've got big eyes sometimes and a lot of crazy ideas uh, um, that we make happen. And I think when when people look up and say, well, uh, you know, this is what he said it we were going to do. Uh, we thought he was kind of crazy at first. But now that things are starting to happen, I think um, you earn respect and and uh, we'll always continue to earn respect and do the best we can. We don't want anything given to us here. And I want that mentality to filter down from me all the way down to our players and our kids, coaches, families, um, 
that want to take a lot of pride in being from here. And I want to put kids in positions. And I, you know, I, I remember walking through these hallways as a kid, you know, 16, 17 year old kid, um, wanting to do what Mr. Knott did. He was our athletic director back then. I wanted to have, I wanted to be able to do the things he was doing that always drew me. I was always, I was always kind of attached to that type of work. And, and, um, you know, I want kids in our school now to to want to want to do what I'm doing, and, and, and with their own spin, and take us to places that we've never been now. You know, uh, and, and do things 20 years from now that 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 we never thought we could do. So that's that's kind of my mentality. I think it's been a good fit, a challenging one. Anytime you're back in your hometown, you've got a lot of friends. <laughs> You've got a lot of friends that you didn't know you had, uh, and you've got a lot of people that are very comfortable talking to you in places that you probably shouldn't need to talk to them or topics they probably shouldn't be talking to you about. Uh, that's part of the deal. You got to filter that and, and kind of strain that out. But um, you know the the pros uh, certainly out, outweigh the cons, and I think when you're able to do good things in your own community, a place that you're tied to, a place that you're really attached to emotionally and and uh, you know physically with your job. Um, you can be influential. And I think that's my goal is to just uh, impact the community the way it impacted me as I was growing up. And, and hopefully we've been able to do that for some kids and families. Yeah, you, you brought up a couple of great points. You know, one is uh, kind of the growth that, that you have gone through. And hopefully we all go through uh, about, you know, how when you first started, you might have might have handled things differently looking back. Uh, but um also, you made a great point at transition us, uh, that will transition us into our next uh, segment uh, about mentors. You know, you recall seeing your high school AD and saying, hey, I think I'd like to do that. I had that same uh, memory. It was just coming back to me. Uh, I was getting goosebumps uh, for my high school coaches and ADs. Um, mentors. Um, who are some of the mentors that you have had in your life as well as in your career uh, the expression I use, I use it all the time. Uh, I still hear those voices in my head. So uh, do you have any voices that you still hear? Yeah, I have. I have so many. I, I, I've been very influenced in my life. Uh, and thankfully, I mean, obviously, starting with my parents, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I was raised uh, to leave things better than you found them. Um, and I think as simple as that sounds, it can carry you a long way in work, in sports and in, in, in being a parent. Uh, you know, all those things. So, so it, it started with my parents, obviously a good foundation. I'm one of three kids. I have a twin brother and sister um, who I look at, look to a lot for, for motivation in other ways. So I think you got to start with your family, you know, uh, and it did. But for me, obviously going through school and playing sports, I had a lot of mentors. I mean, my high school football coach, John Zerzo, means an awful lot to me still to this day. I, I talked to him, uh, just, just some life lessons I was able to learn from, from him and, and, and his family. Uh, you know, as you start, you know, maturing as a, as a young man, trying to figure out people that do things right and, 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 um, attach yourself to people who live life the right way, I think is important. And then when, you know, I got to college, I coach Novak was our head football coach and I was, you know, far from, far from a football star I, I walked on and, you know, I'm not even sure I, I deserved that opportunity, but I, but I worked really hard and, and loved every minute of it. And, and he was just special to me because he treated me like anybody else, you know, and I think like I always, I said earlier, I think working hard will do that for you. I mean, you got to validate why you are places. And I think him just giving me an opportunity to be a part of that organization and the operation. That was when Northern Illinois was turning the corner to and becoming a real football power in our state. Um, and, and just to be a part of that. And I, I think had I not been given that opportunity, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm here today because I learned how to lead. I learned how to, how to fight through tough times I learned how, uh, how how important the team aspect is to things and how important uh, leadership can be to an entire operation. Uh, Coach Novak uh, gave me that. You know, I, I I mentioned Dan Jones earlier. He's been the AD. He just retired from Hinsdale Central in Illinois, long, long-time mentor of mine. Um, Terry Moeller, football coach uh, uh, that I came back and worked for at Mosquito, was a, was a, was a mentor of mine as a young kid. Um, uh, was helping help me strength train when I was in high school or football before school even started every day. Uh, you know, just so many Tim Doherty, I worked for at Edwardsville as a hall of fame coach, uh, you know, it was really hard on me as an assistant, but, but if, if it wasn't for that, I don't know that I'm here today. He was a tremendous athletic director at Edwardsville. Um, I kind of learned uh, how to work there, you know, uh, nothing's going to come easy. 
you know, it's 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 going to be an attitude every day that that you have to win uh, uh, every portion of the day to be successful, and you wake up with that mentality. Uh, so I learned a lot there, you know. So, and then you know, coming back here, I'm I'm back, and I feel like I've got an opportunity now to influence some uh, some other people. So. Um, I, I'm sure I left some off there, but yeah, I mean, I, I am very blessed, um, and very influenced, been around some great people. Um, and I have a connection of friends too, that, that inspire me every day. I talk to a group of friends every day. Uh, I, you know, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned PJ Fleck in Minnesota. We talk frequently about all kinds of things. Uh, you know, our, first of all, we're friends. We talk about our, our, our friendship and families, but you know, uh, um, leadership and and those types of things are things that we value and talk a lot about. And I have just a group of friends here that I talk to every day. And we just motivate each other and challenge each other to be better. It's not always friendly conversations, uh, but it's uh, they're good for the soul. And, and uh, I think everybody needs that. Again, another great point about, you know, having that network. You talked about your mentors and your professional network, but also having that, uh, you know, friend network as well. People you can call and talk to. You know, guys, PJ Fleck, I'm jealous. Uh, he's probably one of the most, for me, you know, you'll see those quotes on, on Twitter or other places. And, you know, invariably uh, it's a PJ Fleck quote that I'm retweeting or, or stealing and using in a uh, uh, presentation of mine. So very cool stuff. For our listeners, uh, once again, our guest today is Scott Battis. He's the athletic director at Muscuda High School in Muscuda, Illinois. We're going to take another break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive Indoor Score Tables and Video Boards. You've heard me say before that one of the best purchases I ever made as an AD was our Sideline Interactive Indoor Score Table. We not only use it for games, but we use it for pep rallies. We use it for signing ceremonies. They're tremendously versatile, and their customer service is just outstanding. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo, see their tables and their scoreboards in action. They not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com, that's snapraise.com, and check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you as an athletic director do your job better. Their Snap Store, Snap Manage, Snap Connect, and of course, their Snap Raise, their fundraising platform. We use Snap Raise with great success, and you can too. There's even a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. I don't think anyone else offers that. Go to snapraise.com for more information. That's snapraise.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Scott, one of the things we try to do with this podcast is the idea of sharing best practices. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. What are some things that you do at Muscuda? Maybe these are things that have been in place since you were a high school student there, or maybe they're new initiatives that you started. But what are some things that you're particularly proud of around your athletic department? Yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, we got a couple of things we do here that I think are really unique. Um, and 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 honestly, I got to be completely honest. I, I think that we're a completely different place than we were in the 90s now. I mean, we're a new building. We have uh, we have more kids. Uh, it's a different era. Um, and, and when I came in and took over as AD, I felt like we had work to do as an athletic department to gain some relevance in the St. Louis area. Um, we 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 had some good programs. We, we've always had a program or two that would be, have some success, things like that. But the culture needed some reform. I felt like we, from top to bottom, needed to make uh, our athletic program uh, something our community can be proud of as a whole, not just every once in a while have a team that makes a run and be good. It's, it, it's, it's about leadership. It's about um, investing yourself in the community of, uh, you know, and, and making your program a service-oriented uh, operation that can really help your community because I, I believe that an, a good athletic program and a good athletic director truly can be the most influential person and group in your town if you if you allow it to be and if you take the right path. So we did a couple things that are unique here. Uh, we have kind of our program athletic program philosophy uh, is based on three 
three words, energy, attitude, and toughness. And a lot of times whenever uh, you see us tweet or, uh, you know, put things on social media, it's follow with the hashtag let's eat or just eat. And it's really kind of uh, taking over our town as far as something to, to hold on to. Our shirts say it on the back, you know, our little league programs have bought in and how we, how we do this and how we, how we inject that philosophy in our athletic programs is pretty unique. Uh, we work on four week cycles in our athletic program. So we have, uh, we have, we have four weeks in a row where we highlight something. So the first week in our cycle is an energy week. The second week in our cycle is an attitude week. The third is a toughness week. And then the fourth one, I let our coaches choose something they believe in for it to be the topic and the engine for that fourth week. And what we do is we reward a kid each week for, for being the example of, of that word for the week. So if it's an energy week, our coaches are preaching energy all week. We're calling out really good examples of energy. Uh, we're highlighting maybe some poor examples of energy in practice, to try to make that the focus. The energy is going to be the focus. And then at the end of the week, we pick an energy athlete of the week for every sport that's going on at the time. And we reward them with a bracelet and it says energy on it or attitude and toughness. It has our eat logo and, and stuff like that. So in our kids, those mean a lot to our kids. I mean, they're given out in front of the team a lot of times. I'll, or I'll, I'll, and I'll present them with their bracelets in my office. So that's a pretty cool uh, kind of unique thing. And then, like I said, we let the coaches add their own spin too. So it's not like we just have this dictatorship and tell you what to do and do it. They, they add their own touch. And I've seen some really cool things and ways that coaches do that, whether it's compassion or something just totally off the beaten path of athletics, you know, loyalty or something like that, that they, they want to add to their to their program. So that's been really unique. And um, I gave a culture summit last week to our little league uh, programs, our little league programs in uh, in town here. And, and a lot of them have bought in and they're buying stickers and wristbands as well um, and giving those out to their kids on a weekly basis. Um, so an energy week at Mascuda is an energy week in the entire town, which has been pretty cool. Uh, we're just getting that started in the little league programs, which I think is neat. That's one really cool thing that I think we do here that's unique that kind of makes, uh, and, and I, you know, and I don't want to, you know, beat it to death here, but, but the thing about it is when I took over as the athletic director, what I wanted to do was have, uh, something to where when kids move on, uh, and go play sports in college, we've got 74 kids playing college sports right now. If we, if those kids are asked at the next level, what they can take from their high school program, we want them to be able to say something. And I think if you ask a lot of kids that at the next level, a lot of them will will be stumped. You know, well, I learned how to play. I learned how to work hard. I learned all these buzzwords. But we want our E philosophy to be able to take them uh, into, into their really constant, you know, be able to concentrate on those th things that can make them successful at that level, too. And they won't all take it. We get it. We know some of it's cliche and some kids aren't into that. And, you know, but it's what we do. And if some kids can take that with them, it can benefit them at the next level. That's huge for us to have that type of impact in their in their life. So we do that uh, there. And then and then the other thing that we do here that I think is is huge and paramount to our success here. We've had a nice run in the last four or five years here. and It's been uh, it's been special. But our strength program, our strength and speed program has become part of our curriculum. You know, we have four hundred and sixty kids, I think, right now enrolled in our strength and speed program, all of our athletes. Uh, and it is taken during the school day. We offer it before school and then all seven periods. Uh, it is full. It's a, you know, we got our, our weight room has moved into a, uh, we've moved it outside into a 6,000 square foot facility so that we got room to do it. And, um, uh, we are, we, we are all in on, on strength and speed. We've got a great staff that leads that program. Um, and they, you know, we, we believe in speed here. We believe building speed before strength, but they're both important. Trust me. But we, we, we think, uh, uh, you know, the speed ultimately is what sets you apart in high school athletics. And we really spend a ton of time every week on speed and then strength uh, right there with it. So that's been the biggest difference. We our, our our district has dedicated itself to that curriculum and allowed us to make it important. Uh, I think sometimes it's an afterthought it is important here. And if you ask those 400 kids what their favorite class is, I can almost guarantee you 350 of them say it's that strength and speed class because they learn a lot, learn how to eat in there. They learn how to they learn how to run, obviously. They learn how, how to take care of their bodies. They're getting strength. And we're building, we are building really some incredible athletes here from scratch. And I don't want anybody, I know that it, you, everybody says, oh, you know, you know, th th those with the, the best athletes have the best chance to win. And sometimes that's true. But you can't just wait for them to move in. You got to make them. 
And uh, we believe in, in, in we believe in tapping into every single piece of a young person's uh, ability here and getting the most out of them. And for the most part, I feel like we've been able to do that. And it's shown in, in our success the last seven years or so. Well, boy, uh, great, uh, great segment. Um, and again, you, you hit on so many key areas, you know, the the strength and speed uh, component, having the support of your uh, district and your administration to implement that program. Uh, and uh, your your themes, the energy, attitude, toughness. We're going to come back to toughness later in the podcast, but uh, uh, you got me, coach. I'm ready to sign up. If one of our listeners wants to reach out and find out more about how you do things at Muscuda and listeners. I think you got a great resource here. What's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Uh, look, look, my my phone's always open, and so is my email. I, I, I love uh, collaborating with other other professionals in our field, so feel free to reach out. I'll probably pick your brain on some things too. My my email address is uh, my last name Battis B A T T A S S with another S. So. Uh, B-A-T-T-A-S-S at msd19.org. Uh, my phone number here at school is 618-566-8523, extension 5106. And uh, that's open anytime. Glad to glad to collaborate or chat. Uh, like I said, I don't be surprised if I try to pick your brain on things too, but uh, I'd love to chat. Well, we'll give that information out again at the end of the podcast. And for our NIAAA members, uh, Scott's information is also on the NIAAA portal. So uh, uh, our guest is Scott Battis. Uh, he's the athletic director at Muscuda High School. He's also a certified athletic administrator. We're going to take another break, but we'll be back. So stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing for their support of the podcast. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges, but they're so much more than that. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to set up and sell your tickets online, not just for your athletic events, but for things like school plays and concerts, school dances, even graduation. They'll also provide you with a dedicated client success manager that will provide you hands-on support every step of the way. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com to get started. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. The Wall of Fame is an interactive touchscreen video console that allows you to highlight your school's top performers in athletics, academics, and the arts for your entire school history. Uh, but it's more than that. The Wall of Fame also allows you to tell more compelling stories to your stakeholders and really go into your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. To find out more, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their great products and then go to vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake to make your order and you'll get 5% off. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake. Check them out today. Welcome back, everyone, to our visit with Scott Battis from Muscuda High School in Muscuda, Illinois. Scott, you mentioned earlier that... Um, you know, you have uh, themes with your coaches, uh, energy, attitude, toughness, uh, regular listeners of the show know that I'm a big fan of uh, toughness. Uh, and here's how I'll set it up for you. Um, back when I was in high school, a hundred years ago, you know, our, our coaches would say things like, come on guys, you got to be tough or come on, Jake, you got to suck it up. And I think we kind of knew what they meant and we, and we did it. Um, in the many years that I've, been in high school since I've been in high school. Uh, I think we've learned much better ways to communicate toughness to kids. Uh, but I still think it's a, an important facet, uh, not just for athletics, but for life. So here's my question for you. How can a coach or an AD help a generation Z kid to develop toughness while also being aware of the challenges that they face that I never had to go through back in the seventies. Uh, do you have any advice for us? Yeah. Toughness is, uh, I'm really passionate about, about the topic myself. I, I think that it has taken on a whole new meaning 
in uh, in this century uh, uh, that we're currently in here with this with this this brand of kid and and certainly athlete. Um, you know, one, one thing that you mentioned, and I I think it's very important, is uh, I am very strongly opposed to generic words used to try to motivate kids. You know, uh, we got to be tougher. Uh, we need to uh, block better. We need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, hit somebody. Th those types of things drive me nuts because coaching will always be about showing, you know. Um, and, and, and I think uh, sometimes we feel like the louder we are, uh, the more we're reaching our kids. And I think nothing can be further from the truth. It's always going to come down to building relationships with kids. Uh, they got to trust you. And I know it's the, the old cliche, they don't care what you know, uh, unless they know you care. It's true. Uh, you know, if, if, if I was just talking about this the other day, if, if, if a kid's memory of an individual when they get older is the way they yelled at them and their teammates or the way they acted outlandishly uh, during little league games or even high school games. If that's how they remember you, uh, you did the opposite of what you should have been doing as a coach. And toughness to me um, starts when you wake up in the morning. You know, um, there, 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 there's really not a soul um, uh, that, that can feel comfortable all the time. It's not part of life. You know, being comfortable all the time is not real life. Uh, and so the way I think we help kids be tough is understand that every single moment during the day is a challenge that requires toughness. You know, it requires toughness to get out of bed. It re requires toughness to, you know, uh, make sure you look the way you want to look before you go. It requires toughness to, um, you know, if it's cold outside, to, to, to not let that be the the one thing that puts you in the wrong mood before you walk in the, in the building. It, it takes toughness to, to show up to class on time when you have a group of kids that may be trying to keep you from doing so. Um, it takes toughness to say uh, no when kids want you do, to do things that question your integrity and your ability uh, to, uh, to, to cooperate with the code of conduct in school. It takes toughness. All of those things are element of toughness. If you notice, I haven't brought up the physical part of toughness yet. Because I think that's just such a small part of that word. And, and I, I just truly believe that teaching kids, first of all, being able to tell kids no is incredibly important. Um, and kids need to understand the value of no. No different than my kid being in the sporting goods store with me yesterday, wanting every single thing that he sees on his shelf. And, you know, I can tell you this, and I talked to my wife about this yesterday, and she's – fantastic uh for me to just bounce things off of because she'll tell me i'm wrong and, and, and those don't make sense so so it's great for her to hear how i'm feeling but but just yesterday you know we're, we're, we're trying to teach our kid the value of no and that is tough in itself on me but i'm trying to teach him the toughness of you don't get everything you want uh you know it could because in, in, in kids are smart see they'll work their way up from a you know, something that might be expensive all the way down to at least if they get a candy bar, that's a, that's a win for them. You know what I mean? So the, the, the toughness is twofold. You're teaching a kid to be tough. They don't get they don't get everything they want. And the parent needs to be tough, to, even when it comes down to that one dollar item at the cash out at the register that you don't just give into that either. That's that's that is so, so toughness is twofold. The toughness a lot of times falls on the coach's ability, the parent's ability to say no, um, even if you think that it's really going to be detrimental to what the kid feels about you in the next five minutes. And a lot of times what we do is we trade what we want most for what we want at the moment. And, and, and what we want at the moment will not carry the value um, um, that you think it does. The value is actually in the adverse part of that, uh, of that topic, you know, being able to say no, because you know, when that kid is two years older, They've developed the discipline to not even have to ask that question or put you in that situation as a coach to do something you're not comfortable doing. You know, and I know a lot of coaches fall into this. And sometimes we do have those athletes once in a while where we want them helping us make decisions. But we also have some kids that we like a lot, love them, great kids, good athletes, not great athletes that we have trouble saying no to because they're such good kids. You know, give me the ball when you know 
that that's not your best chance to win or that's not your best chance to win that moment. And we do it sometimes. And then we go in the locker room and kick ourselves because we answered our conscious to a nice kid. Well, you know, when you're coaching, to me, if you've got kids out there that you're coaching that you don't respect that way, then you shouldn't have kept them. So, you know, it's our, it's our, it's our job as coaches to make sure that we're, that, that we are, are making influential decisions, regardless of how much we like the kid or how close of a family friend we are with that kid's parents. Uh, uh, to do what's best for the team for our career. And all of that goes back to toughness. It goes back to toughness from the coach, and it's developing toughness in the kids. But the reason we 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 harp on it here is we are trying to have coaches call out different elements of toughness in practice, and there's so many elements. Sometimes it's the kid that's working harder. Sometimes it's the kid that refuses to let his toe touch the line on gassers, no matter how hard it is or how bad we struggle. And, and you've got to be able to do that. And sometimes the toughness comes from a kid calling out another kid for not being tough enough. And I think those are important, too. And that trust within your team uh, really can build the character and, and kind of build what your team is on the outside. Feel what, what, what people what, what do people see in your team? Do they see the, the kids controlling what happens or are you controlling what happens as coach? in a controlled manner. And I think that, that goes a long way as far as success. And a lot of teams that went at a high level for a long time are very disciplined. Um, they play together. They, they care about each other, but they call each other out too. And they, they, they hold each other accountable. And accountability um, is probably the twin brother of toughness, to be completely honest with you. Well, you, you covered so many great things. I mean, that, that was a podcast in itself right there. Um, and you started out with one of my favorite concepts, um, you know, not wanting to hear your coaches. And I, I would tell my coaches, um, uh, if I hear these things, you're fired. Um, uh, come on, you got to block or come on, you got to tackle, or is anybody going to tackle things like that? And, and I, I, I never, I would tell them that before they started coaching for, so they knew, uh, that stuff just drives me crazy. You know, come on, you got to block. Oh, really? I, I didn't understand that. You know, tell them how to block, teach them how to block. You know, you got to punch, you got to drive your feet. You got to rip and get to second level. I mean, you know, give them a tool that they can go out and be successful regardless of the sport. You know, we just use football. Um, and, you know, you, you talked about how toughness, it's, it's not so much the physical, it's all those other things that allow the kid, whatever level they are, superstar or substitute, to use the skills that they currently have to be physically tough. Great, great stuff. Wow. Um, you know, you, you're not just a friend of the show now, you're going to be a regular, we're going to bring you back for mm -hmm. some more. Okay. Uh, for our listeners, uh, our guest today, Scott Battis, Certified Athletic Administrator, President-Elect for the Illinois Athletic Director Association, uh, and the Director of Athletics at Mascuda High School in Illinois. We're going to take one more break uh, as we move toward the end of the show, but uh, we're coming back with more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thank you to Final Forms for their support of the podcast. Go to finalforms.com, and they're going to help you prepare for your best seasons ever. Final Forms can help you as an AD. Uh, if you're an IT professional or even a superintendent, you need to check out Final Forms. For an athletic director, Final Forms can help you with your coaches, uh, with your stakeholders, and they can help you with all of the reports that come across your desk. To find out more about all the ways that Final Forms can help you in your program, Go to finalforms.com slash Jake. That's finalforms.com slash Jake and get started with Final Forms. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're visiting today with Scott Battis from Mascuda High School. Scott, we were talking during the break about, you know, social media, some of the, you know, uh, obviously there's pros and cons to anything and, and social media has its own peculiar uh, aspects. What are some things you could share with our listeners about um, that, you know, good and sometimes not as good uh, social media influence? Sure. I, I think social media, you know, it's one of those things where you may not love it. Uh, you, you may not be in tune with it, but it's critical uh, in this era. Uh, that's how kids communicate. That's how parents communicate. That's how uh, messages are, are, are being translated. Um, and, and so, you know, you either got to choose to embrace social media or, 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 or just be left behind because it just is what we are. And I, you know, I'm not one of those guys. I always tell people that 
you can't just say I'm old school anymore because old school doesn't work anymore. Now, there are some old school principles that I admire and there's some old school things and toughness is one of those things. But when it comes down to the way we do things now, you have to embrace new. Uh, and, and unfortunately, it's just reality. Uh, you know, I wish that we could just use paper and pencil still. You know, I wish we could do things like that. I wish that, uh, you know, you had to wear a watch if you want to know what time it was and things like that. But we just don't live in that time anymore. And and it and it took off on us quickly. I think the social media stuff evolved so fast that it just kind of blindsided people. But But the fact is, social media provides a remarkable way for you to market your programs. And so we we have really uh, we, we have really embraced that uh, instead of instead of just talking about the challenges of it. We're on active on Twitter. We're active on Facebook. Anything you need to know about our programs, you can find by following our Twitter. Uh, anything you want to know about our programs, you can find by following not only Facebook by the district, but my own personal Facebook is basically a cheering section for our athletic department because I feel like. If, you know that that's who I am, and, and so if people want to want to be uh, want to follow us that way, they can. Uh, but but it also is a great way to highlight student athletes. You know, put their pictures up and give them the credit they deserve. You know, 15 years ago, we had a hard time getting kids credit because it was you know how was it shown in, in the weekly newspaper that came out or you know uh, other things that that uh, I'm sorry about that. No worries. Um, but is it is it you know uh, how are we going to, to 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 give them the credit they deserve? Well, social media has given us a great opportunity to do that. We have uh, we now have have the option to use these graphics that you mentioned. Gipper Gipper is a great resource. Uh, something that we've used Gipper and Box out here at Mosquito because they both have things to offer. Uh, we use PosterMyWall.com to create uh, schedules and. Other things that that have that have made us look like a professional operation, and, and the thing is, we want to model our programs after what the kids see all the time: college, schools, uh, social media, pro, uh, the, the pro outlets, and the way they're doing things with graphics. So we 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 spend a lot of time on our you know social media and production types things. I have a group of kids that help me, our athletic operations kids. They, it's a club kind of, they come in, they help me get the graphics for the the video boards and some of the interactive things that we do during the games with the lights off and the light, you know, the, we have the lights for the starting lineups and all the neat stuff the kids like, but that's all important now. And it didn't used to be as significant. We used to say, Oh, we don't need any of that stuff. That's the world we live in. You got to adapt. And the most effective leaders on our planet will be the ones that can adapt the, the best to, to how things uh, are, are going and will go. And that starts with the president of the United States and works its way all the way down to an elementary school uh, teacher as far as leadership goes. They're all significant in their own way. And you got to adapt to what kids are receptive to. Social media is what they look for. Uh, and, 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 and that's just if you want to win, you got to win there. And uh, I think that starts with it. And, and I believe in it, and I think our people here have done a really good job with 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 using that to our advantage. Yeah, again, you bring up another great point. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, and again, I'm a few years older than you. You know, uh, we, there was no social media. There, there is no, you know, promoting you know individual athletes, individual uh, um, accomplishments. Um, but now that's just the way it is. And it's not right, wrong, good, or bad. It's just, this is how it is. And if you're not doing it, you're doing your program, your teams, your coaches, and your kids a disservice. And it's so easy to do, as you mentioned, you know, with, with some of the different platforms out there, certainly, you know, we're excited about our relationship with Gipper, but, um, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, promote those kids, you know, the kids are on social media. Uh, many of the parents are on social media and, and here's the other thing. Um, people are going to talk about your program one way or another. Why not help take control of that narrative and direct the conversation with all the positive things that are coming out of your program, not just sports wise, but, you know, uh, team GPAs and community service projects and things like that. Use social media to help your programs get even better. And, uh, you know, listeners, uh, uh, you know, Scott's right. He's very active on social media, started following him uh, recently. And, you know, you, you could take a page out of his playbook. Um, uh, just great stuff. We're going to give out your contact information again, but uh, uh, it's time to go to the athletic director's toolbox. This has been great spending some time with you. I, I do mean that. 
Uh, but we always wrap up with our AD toolbox. You know, you've certainly demonstrated to our listeners that you know your way around the world of athletics. But we're going to take our final break and hear from Athletic Surveys, who sponsor the toolbox. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Scott Battis is going to put into his new Athletic Director toolbox. So please stay with us. We want to thank Athletic Surveys for sponsoring the AD Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic directors typically only hear from that 2%, that squeaky wheel parent, or maybe a disgruntled athlete, and we need to hear from them so we can affect positive change in our program. But we also need to hear back from the 98% that really love and support our programs. And that's where Athletic Surveys comes in. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to show you how they can create a custom survey for your athletic department that'll let you take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. Go to athleticsurveys.com and get started today. That's athleticsurveys.com. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We've been visiting with Scott Battis, a certified athletic administrator, uh, the new president-elect for the Illinois State AD Association, uh, and the director of athletics for Muscouta High School in Muscouta, Illinois. Uh, Scott, uh, as I said, you've certainly demonstrated uh, that you know your way around the world of athletics, but right now I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new AD on their very first job, but I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox what three items are going to go into your athletic director toolbox well a couple of things I, I i think uh for the first and foremost thing that i think i had to find out pretty early in the profession is that there are no little things i think uh, it's a cliche topic um you know we talk about little things a lot but to be successful in any leadership role in my opinion is that the mindset of there are no little things is so valuable. And, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes if we're just a couple minutes late or if we let start practice just a tad late or we get a little bit off script on practice, those are little things to people. And we brush them off as so. But the most disciplined leaders, uh, the most disciplined programs, none of those things happen. And so I think the more comfortable we get with treating everything as it's significant, uh, the more successful we'll be. So that's the message we pass on to our coaches, uh, little league and uh, coaches on down on all the way up to our varsity coaches is that, you know, there are no little things. And when you, when you, when you are at your most successful point, it will be because you found some type of relevance in some of the most obscure things, some of the most, uh, you know, uh, easiest, smallest types of character traits or any type of lesson that you can apply to your sport. And so I think that's important as an athletic director. Uh, there are no little things. I think it's a great mentality to have when you're starting, especially because the, 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 the time will go fast and you don't want to get too far behind to where there's a big pile of little things left that's become a monumental problem in the middle of your career. I think that's one really important thing. The second tool that I would say is is that there needs to be a mapped out detailed plan of your hopes and dreams for the athletic program you're going to take over, regardless of how good it may be when you take over or how much it might struggle at that time. Uh, you know, and, 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 and while, you know, while, while sometimes our eyes are big and our dreams are bigger, it's okay to write those things down because of, as I've found in, in, in my tenure so far is that, there's a lot of different paths to getting things done and, and you will be able to explore those paths. There'll be some lines of communication open that you didn't know that you had. There'll be some resources. There'll be some financial things you'll be able to figure out when it might seem too hefty at first. Um, and, and you'll be in charge of all those things, but without a detailed plan and a map to get there, uh, uh, you're just going to be lost and you're going to be pulling strings from all kinds of different angles and never really accomplish a whole lot. But I've, all, I've always found that when things are on paper and they're written down and tucked away somewhere and you can start crossing things off that list, you're more apt, you know, to continue to move in the right direction by using that that list. So I think a, a, a mapped out detailed plan and, and, and a fluid one at that, that you continue to add to 
uh, and continue to chase, I think is, is extremely important. And then the third thing that I think uh, uh, can be uh, truly one of the most influential things you can do as an athletic administrator or the most detrimental, if not managed the correct way, is that don't change things just to change. Uh, something doesn't work out. Something gets it leaves a bad taste in your mouth at first. Don't just change. Fix the problems. And I think a lot of times what we do is we built a relationship with a coach. Maybe needs to be let go. Um, all accounts say that it's, it's just not working out. We have such a good relationship with them that what we try to do is just change their role a little bit. Or, you know, we, we want to get rid of a coach from one sport, so we just put them in another. That way – that way that they're not too upset with us or things like that. Fix the problems. If there's a problem, help them either fix their own problems. And if that problem can't be fixed, fix your own problem by getting somebody in to replace them. And it doesn't just, it just, it doesn't just hold true with personnel. It, it holds true with decisions we make every day. And a lot of times what we're doing is we're taking a pile of something that we know is not right, moving it to a different area so we don't have to worry about it so much. And it goes all the way back to don't, 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 don't sacrifice what you want long-term for what you want right now. And what we want right now is, uh, is honesty with ourself and honesty with where we want our programs to go. And if you can truly be that, you're going to be so successful in this, this profession. We've all struggled with it, including myself, where none of us are perfect, but we get in a bad habit of just moving our problems down the road and hoping to deal with them later while taking care of a small issue today. And it just doesn't benefit you long-term. So I think those three mindsets have really helped me here um, over the years. Uh, there's a million things I could offer a new athletic director of uh, experiences, but I just think those things are so important. Uh, uh, no, no, no such thing as little things. Have a detailed plan to how you want to be successful. And don't, don't, don't just change to change. Fix your problems uh, and believe in yourself. And, and I think this, this profession – uh, is and I meant it earlier when I said it. I I think that our profession is one of the most undervalued professions um, in public education and private education. I think you have an opportunity to be the most influential person in your community if you if you're willing to take on that burden. Um, and those that are willing to take it on uh, can really can really 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 set your community and your school up for some success long term. And I think that's our job as uh, as athletic directors. Wow. Uh, you probably saw me scribbling all things down. Uh, j just love that. Uh, you know, fix your problem. Don't pass it on. All the others, you know, were, were great too. And what you said about our profession, um, you know, we have an AD here in Florida that, that mentioned, uh, it came out during, uh, you know, when COVID was hitting that he couldn't imagine any other profession that was more wired or prepared to deal with all the things that COVID, you know, threw on our table, uh, than the profession of being a, a educational athletic director. So uh, very good stuff. Scott, once again, appreciate you spending time with us. I know you're incredibly busy. Uh, once more, if one of our listeners wanted to reach out, pick your brain a little bit, and, and listeners, you heard me say it before, I think you've got a great resource here. What's the best way they can get a hold of you? Email's the best. Uh, as I said before, my email address is B-A-T-T-A-S-S -S at msd19.org. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is CoachB83 on Twitter. Uh, feel free to uh, to track me down there. Also, uh, at Mascuda19 Athletics uh, is, is our athletic site, uh, our athletic Twitter. Uh, we'd love to have some some people follow us. I'd, glad, I'd be glad to follow uh, many of you back. Um, I think that's a great resource for uh for communication for for people in our profession all over the country so uh, feel free to shoot me a direct message there too if you want to get a hold of me but uh, i'm always open for a conversation or uh, an email i'm glad to share any materials i have or are certainly open uh, i've got several uh, presentations on a lot of the things we talked about today i'd be glad to share too so uh yeah anything i can do to help i'd be glad to well great stuff for our listeners um we do this just about every day and we also upload the zoom videos to our educational lady podcast youtube channel we appreciate you listening today scott thanks so much for sharing with us and all the best uh for the rest of the spring season i appreciate it very much thanks for having me on and uh good luck to everybody okay once again for listeners we appreciate you listening we'll see you next time on the educational ad podcast 
Well, that was definitely a fun one. Uh, Again, we appreciate you listening. Check out our partners, check out our sponsors. And thanks again for listening to the Educational AD Podcast.